Hey everyone. Hello. All right, let's wait a couple. Everyone's early, it's good. Hi, everyone. Hello, that's your part. So Andrew is coming here today, so I will facilitate. Oh, if Dan is here, he will also help out. Um, yeah. let's give a couple couple minutes, and then we can get yeah. started. Uh, Brendan Mitchell won't be able to make it. He has a, I think he's going to some Docker thing. Cool. Yeah. Right. So let's see. Thank you for filling up today's. Oops, let me go put it in the chat. All right, so we'll start in a little bit. Um, All right, cool. So I uh, the document is in the meeting notes is in. Please put in your your attendance, your name in. Okay, cool. So just wanna go. Let me go through. I think. Everyone here has been here before, so we don't need to do any new introductions. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and so today's agenda is going to be kind of going through some of the points in the paper, um, figuring out, uh, I think there are a few points of discussion. Uh, we are get that ironed out. And also, um, you know, there, there are a few places where I think we still need to do to add a few a few more details, need to clarify a few more things. Um, other than that, I, I think based on I just took some time to review the document. I think it looks it looks good. Everything before the prototyping um, section, which we haven't really gotten to yet, looks spectacular. I mean, just read like just looking at this, I think this is uh, in my opinion, you know, already useful. So that's great. So let's go around first. Um, to uh, if anyone has any updates, any interesting thoughts that they'd like to share that maybe we can talk about in future meetings or, or we can just discuss about. 
Sure. Um, so uh, one that I wanted to talk about. So I took a lot of what's already in the um, the white paper. Um, my team and I, using sort of the open source tooling, um, started to build up a reference implementation. Um, this is just purely some, uh, you know, a POC. This is not intended to be the open source implementation for um, what, what we're doing necessarily with the CNCF, but um, can definitely show that off in a future um, meeting. There's obviously some stuff that's still missing, some stuff that's probably we have some open questions about, but I think uh, it can do some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so maybe we'll have that next week, and then we'll put out some few of those in case other folks also want to join them. Sure. Anyone else with anything to share? I think Rory posted a soil type supply chain report in the group. So if you if you're curious, that's also there in the chat. So. Hey Jason, I see that you've joined. Is it? I, I don't see you in the meeting notes before. So is this your first time joining the call? It is, yeah. I added myself to the, I think I did, yeah. Awesome. Do you want to do a quick intro? Sure. I'll even uh, put on my camera. Awesome. Is that working? OK. Uh, hi, I'm Jason Hall. I uh, work at Red Hat on dozens of things, one of which is Tekton and OpenShift pipelines. And prior to being at Red Hat working on that, I was at Google working on all of that stuff. Uh, and so I have an interest in how stuff gets delivered. I'm also on the CDF uh, governing board and TOC. So uh, if there is any overlap with CDF stuff, uh, I can also help with that, answer questions, ask questions, do whatever. Good to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Good to see you here. All right. Um, if not, I think we can we can jump straight in. So uh, I know, Michael, you had a few things on your side, and I think I had a few things as well. So you can go sure. first if you like. Yeah. Um, I think one of the big ones, and this is something that came out of some of the stuff that we were poking around with um, while sort of writing up a reference, reference implementation. Um, was uh, definitely sort of the need to clarify a bit more how we're doing emission control inside of the, the secure software factory. So not emission control for like signed things that are coming out of it and policy and yada yada, but actually how do we sort of validate that, you know, as an example, you know, we have some CICD tools. How are we sure that the CICD tools that are being run are signed and have been validated and have been checked, signed off on and that somebody hasn't uh, replaced uh, th that, um, you know, behind the scenes. And the same thing goes with uh, builders, right? Like if if I'm using something like Kaneko, how am I validating that the parent image of my Docker file is, you know, signed off on that, you know, yes, you're allowed to use that, that parent image. Um, and if you want to see me break that, uh, go attend the uh, supply chain con <laughs> um, uh, demo. Yeah, so I think this was one of the things I had on my list as well, so that, that you brought up. Um, let me scroll through the section. So I think that that is like a couple, um, I think the two main parts is like emission control for um, for use, like you said, outside and within the, the emission controller. Um, so I guess the question is, do you think that there's clarity about how it's being used within the SSF or are you looking for clarity with, about like the different artifacts and the different things that go into, in and out of it? I think to some extent we should be clarifying almost like best practices 
around some of it. Like, I, I, this is where I think this kind of comes into some of the things we had talked about before, which is um, conceptually, what are we saying is a reasonable bottom turtle for folks to sort of say, okay, I'm trusting this level of base image and this is where we're, or this base level of thing. And then moving forward from it. So like, just as an example, like, um, you know, we could go all the way down the chain. I'm not saying we should do this, right? Where we can say, oh, well, you got to compile your Linux kernel from scratch um, using a known, you know, good compiler. I'm not saying we should do that, but like, that's, you know, potentially an argument, but there's, I think, a more reasonable argument around maybe just highlighting. And once again, this is just my two cents. Uh, other folks chime in of saying, you know, use, you know, signed uh, base images from, you know, uh, organizations you trust, like, and leave it open to, to that. Um, I, I don't know, like, like, as an example, I know for myself, like, hey, if I'm using Tekton, I'm validating that I'm using Tekton signed images. I'm validating that if I'm using a, a Tekton specific builder, like the Git one, I am validating that that was signed. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, so, uh, and um, when it comes to sort of other things, like let's say I'm using, I don't know, a Rust builder. Like, okay, is Rust signing their images? If not, what do I do? I think we need to just sort of specify, like if, if there is no signed builder image that you trust, then you need to sort of generate that image yourself based off of something that you, you do trust. Um, just my, my two cents there. So, yeah, so I mean, for the sake of sort of making progress, right? Like I think ultimately, right, we want as big a surface as possible to, to be that. I think, you know, I, I, I like to sort of, carve out uh, sort of a line in the sand that we think is achievable and we can expand over time using the sort of uh, principles of how we do these things. So, um, you know, I, I think, um, and I also think different organizations will have different, you know, tolerance for, you know, accepting things from other organizations. But um, I, I do think it's a really good point to sort of identify sort of, um, uh, a set of principles, but, and that, but then, you know, sort of, uh, carve out what we think is sort of, uh, practical as a starting point and then sort of work back from there because this will take years. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. If I can Please. jump in and add a depressing point, um, whatever we do, if Jenkins doesn't pick it up and make it a default, then we're missing out on about two thirds of the world's workloads. Sadly, I get, I, I admire where Tecton is going and I think it's really cool. And it, it's one of the few things that, you know, makes me, uh, sort of take my eyes off my one true love in CI systems. Um, but ultimately the workloads are running in Jenkins in, in bulk. I, I think it seems like there are kind of two subcategories of the emission controller. At least, at least from what I'm seeing, right? There, there seems to be one where it's like validating the actual step or task that's being run, validating the provenance of that, and then um, validating the artifacts, um, yeah. which it seems like some of these are handled by, by the things that run within the steps. Um, and then the provenance of the step itself, obviously, has to be done by a mission controller. So I'm not sure, is it worth like splitting it up into two different things, two different components? Well, I, I think conceptually they're all, well, yeah, so I, yeah, so sorry. There's, conceptually, there's two pieces. One is validating that the secure software factory itself, like running inside of a control plane that, whatever it itself is being, you know, its images are trusted and signed and that only those images that are trusted and signed are being run. Um, and then separately, when running pipelines, ensuring that the pipelines that we're running are, 
you know, the, the definitions are following some sort of policy and that the actual um, builds that we're running are also uh, only running things that we, you know, against some sort of policy, like, you know, they've been signed by a trusted party, that kind of thing. Yeah, so for the uh, for the first point you made, right, like ensuring our pipelines are trusted, the pipeline that are running. So there's some work we are doing essentially on the admission control of our pipeline, uh, specifically for Tecton at the moment, right? When the Tecton run gets triggered, we do the validations, whether the specification, the images that you're using in the task, whether those are signed, and then we are allowing the admission to that uh, pipeline run. And on the second point uh, that the, the dependency that you're pulling, like base images, whether those are signed or not, I think it applies equally to all the third-party dependencies, right? I mean, it might be a Python package that you're downloading. How do you ensure that it is trusted, right? So the way I think we should, we can frame it is like generate an s -bomb of all the dependencies and check every dependency, whether it is coming from trusted source. And base image is essentially one part of it, but it should basically be generic enough to say, all any dependency that you're bringing in, you should be verifying it for uh, uh, whether they're coming from trusted source. I mean, yeah, at the moment, I think we have the verifications available only for base images with cosine. Uh, and once we have it for Python packages, Node and others, we should do the same for uh, them as well. So I think this changes with the idea of hermetic builds, right? So I, I think the it seems like the responsibility is kind of in between either um the pipeline itself if we are assuming the pipeline is the one that's shepherding all of the artifacts around versus you know if the task itself is going to be pulling and using the base image yeah um also, one thing regarding the the S bomb thing, actually, that I think opens up a another um, question. This is like just purely a like you know I, I'm not trying to lead the, lead this in any direction, but um, I've struggled to find um, a lot of existing S bomb tooling that really does generate the full list of things that I would sort of want from an S bomb. So that includes stuff like I want my source right. I want to have hashes of all my source files. I want to have my dependencies in some way of, you know, some hash reference to it, whether it be a Git hash reference or SHA-256 reference to the package or something like that. Um, so there's that SBOM that I want. I want an SBOM of my build environment, right? So, uh, you know, some, and, and, I, and, and an SBOM of like, if I'm applying it to, let's say a runtime container after the fact, like, yes, I built it here. I took that layer that had all my artifacts and I, plopped it on a runtime container. Um, I want to have also an SBOM of the runtime container so that I know all these things. Um, and I found at least like in most cases, I don't know if there's particular languages that that both SPDX, Cyclone DX, and whatever else is out there ha have done some good stuff on, but I haven't really found a lot that seem to, to, to be able to really generate most of that stuff. Um, I don't know if anybody else has, has found that today. Yeah, I think for all the dependencies in the all the S bomb, right? They take different approach. If you are using package, you identify with the version number, right? If it is an image, you identify with the tag and SHA of the image. Uh, if it is a file, then I think the, the hash makes sense. So the identifier keeps changing uh, based on the type of the artifact. Yeah. So in that particular case, that's where I kind of I think um, that that's a hill I'd fight on. Uh, which is, to me, I think depending on the package manager, depending on how they compiled the, uh, that particular package, um, you can end up with, you know, oh, Debian compiled it with these parameters, uh, Red Hat compiled it with these parameters, and you look at the two of them and you go and you say, okay, well, the, you know, the Debian one is, is, has this vulnerability, but the RPM one doesn't. Um, there's a lot of areas where I think that that can kind of get messed up. And then also with lots of things, uh, anyway, I'm not going to go too deep there, but I, I think it's something that, um, but, but even beyond that, I think the thing that I'm running into is when I generate S bombs with SPDX tools or cycle and DX tools, I'm often not getting all the things I would sort of want from them. Like my list of source files, my list of, you know, like, uh, recursive, um, 
references to other S bombs, that kind of thing. Can can I jump in there and and suggest that it sounds like you want your S bombs to do two different things? One of which is you want asset data. What is the structure of things and how they nested and associate with each other? And the other is process data. How do they get to be that way? Well, I I think that there's um, it's the way that, uh, and this is maybe just some lack of clarity in, you know, if you read through like the NTIA SBOM sort of uh, spec, they kind of leave a lot of it very, very open-ended um, with saying only a couple of things are really sort of required. Um, the, the sorts of things I'm, I'm wondering, right, is I want to know what were the inputs, what was, how were they built, right? Like, so what, what was the actual build um, context and then what were the outputs? So I can go back and look at my, you know, if I, I'm concerned about a particular, let's say, package, I can go and look at the SBOM for that package and see, oh, it was compiled with, you know, this version of this library. So it's not exposed to that, that vulnerability. I, cool. I follow that. What I'm driving at is, um, it, it seems to me most SBOMs are oriented towards asset data. I don't know that they're the right place for process data. Um, something like in Toto or in Toto um, is more oriented towards process data. That might be the natural place for it. Like that, they're, they're complementary data. They're, they're like one's the different differential and the other one's the integral. But I'm I'm not sure that a single format will correctly encompass them. I can think of a single database doing it, but a single format, I'm not sure. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just say, I'll, uh, off offline. I'll send you a link of sort of what I was looking at. Sure. So I, I think it seems that we're talking about this metadata documents actually, right? Um, kind of tangentially. Um, I think the question here is, um, one, does this fit into metadata chains? Um, or two, does this, is this kind of like marginally out of scope and whether we can talk about it and not dive too deep into it? I say we dive deep. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so Michael, I, um, what do you think is a good way to express some of those thoughts? But at the same time, do you think that this is? It sounds like it's a problem that isn't fully solved today. Um, so, is there? Should this be within scope? Uh, or, you know, how should we manage the scope of this? Yeah, um, that I, I'm gonna uh, defer to, to some of the other folks um, on that. Um, I'm still relatively new to the SBOM sort of world. Uh, so I, I, yeah, um, the, the, my only concern is having sort of poked around with some of the tooling, I found that some of the tooling isn't capturing some of the libraries. Uh, some of the tooling isn't capturing some of the packages that are maybe included. And, um, you know, I just want to sort of highlight that as maybe like something we we maybe want to say, hey, look, generate an SBOM, but we recognize today that the SBOM tooling is very much in flux and maybe isn't purely representative. So you might need to have mitigating controls around it. Like that might be something um, that you might want to say, but uh, want to get everybody else's thoughts. So I, I agree that both of those pieces of information are useful. I mean, I sort of see it as sort of states and state transitions, right? So, uh, you know, there's the supply chain is effectively a set of states, uh, you know, pieces of things that have been aggregated together and uh, handled by various pieces of tooling to produce other things that are then consumed by other things and turned into the thing. But um, SBOM, I think, is oriented towards the set of states. Sorry, my dog's going nuts. Uh, I, I think that um, both pieces of that are critically important to capture, though, um, in the fullness of time. And doing that transitively is going to be a very, very hard problem. And what does your dog have to say about that? I'm just kidding. Throw the ball. <laughs> the dog's really passionate about S-bombs.
Yes, he wants me to throw the orange S bomb for him to go transition after. Any any more thoughts on this? If not, it does sound like um, it does sound to me like it's important, but it's really hard. <laughs> it's a it's a good summary. Well, I mean, yeah, I think. <sighs> Yes, doing doing it completely and exhaustively, you know, to the full transitive effect will will be hard. Partly because you will quickly reach outside of the domain of your own control, and so we will need to like bring other folks into the fold and stuff like this, right? Like this this touches on the prevalence of open source dependencies and things, and you know, whatnot, right? But I think establishing how you do this for sort of um, individual transitions within the the broader state graph um, you know that allows you to do this for the things within your scope of control and then us as a group putting out guidance that lets us make that more prevalent um, <laughs> and composable so that we uh, you know can capture more of that that grander <laughs> dependency graph <laughs> um, so I don't know if you can hear me. He's, he's one. Yeah, no, no. Um, you know, I, I think that's part of how we solve the, the much harder, um, you know, general problem. So while my Dan, were you going to say something? Sorry. So my my thoughts on um, so it sounds like this is something that we want to say. Okay, um, here's. A recommendation that we do this. Um, we don't want to say that it for this particular reference architecture. It sounds like we don't want to say that you must do it because it may not be possible. But we are, we want to recommend that you do it whenever possible, and that in today's in today's ecosystem, um, from what from what I see in the chat is that there are ways that we can do this. And there's a way that we can kind of show this within the reference architecture. Does that, does that sound good? Okay. I'm seeing nuts. Um, I'm wondering, uh, Matt and Michael, would you like to kind of add this section in? Or just talk yeah. a little bit about it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, I will uh, update that a little uh, later today. Okay. Yeah, and Matt, if you could help take a look and have your own additions as well, that would be awesome. Um, and this will go. Let me just. Uh, what do we want to call this? Metadata. I'm gonna just. Put it under the metadata additions first. Oh. So maybe we should go back to the emission control list. <laughs> Sure. Uh, which yeah. which section? Because I that that was the thing too with the. Yeah. Sorry. I was reading chat. One second. Then. Uh, such fast. Um. Yeah, Jack was if you if you want to just um share it in the in the, in the Slack and you know if. Is something that folks are interested in. Maybe we can just spend some time next time just talking about it. So, if it's if it's ready, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been sitting on it for several months on a draft, and I've, it's one of those things where I work so hard on it that I'm afraid to read it in case I hate it, um, <laughs> which happens. Um, 
I have a book I wrote and I, I, I'm terrified of reading it. Just, just got to hit the publish button. <laughs> All right. So, so coming back to this, um, admission controller, I, I think we, we, we have to do kind of a similar exercise with what we did with S bombs, right? Um, where it seems like we have three different things to take that infrastructure pipeline and artifacts uh, that we want to say are related to emission controller. Um, and how comfortable are we um, to say that admission controller is going to fulfill all of these tasks? Or is there a different point of contention with the emission controller set that the discussion is about? Is there current functionality that the admission controllers we know out of the box can do these? Because like, again, if we're trying to fit a uh, square peg in a round hole here, right? Like, I don't think that should be the mission of the document. We have to say, what is it we can do right now, right? Mm -hmm. And if there's stuff that in the future that we can extend the mission controllers to be able to address, then, you know what I mean? Like, I, I you know, yep. that's the thing we have, we just need to figure out here, I think. Yeah, the I think it, the admission controller can do most of it and what it can't do what we can probably suggest is you have a um, you have the emission controller validate the provenance of a um, image and a task that can do those things as part of the process, but defer to admission controller where you can. So as an example, um, I know, uh, what was it, uh, who mentioned this? Oh, Jason had mentioned, you know, Canico is looking to, you know, adopt a way of validating the signatures of parent images automatically. Um, so it can't do that today, but one of the things I've done in my own stuff is I've been able to go in and say, well, I create a step that use a, uses a signed image that validates the signature and then passes that on to the next thing. Um, and I think that seems like a reasonable trade-off we could probably make that when admission, where the emission controller can't do an action, just have a trusted task that can do that action. And then, um, does that sound reasonable to folks? Uh, I have some thoughts, but I'm gonna let, let folks go around this. So having a separate uh, having a separate verify thing is definitely nice for its uh, universality, right? It can it, you don't have to modify Conoco and it, a dozen other tools to do verification but it introduces a race like or or a race maybe and definitely some coordination some 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 need to make the two things work together uh i think we should attack it in both directions right where like have something that covers every case and try to get that built into these tools so you don't need that in every case you might end up verifying twice if you have the cover everything verifier and the conoco verifier uh, or the, you know, build packs or Docker or whatever. Uh, but that way, you know, who does it hurt to verify it twice? Uh, that's not so bad. Um, curious what other folks think. I largely, yeah, I largely agree with that. Um, you know, if possible, you want to include it in the right sorts of tools, like the more the admission controller can do with a lot of these pieces, right? The, the more you can kind of take out of some of these other pieces that you now need to say, like, cause as an example of the Canico case, like, Hey, I have a, I have a cosine verifier that goes in, verifies the parent images of the Docker file and says, okay, cool. Those things are signed. But now I have a cat. Now I have that image and that task I now need to trust, and that's another piece that could potentially go wrong, um, compared to something that's maybe a little bit more well suited for it, like the emission controller or whatever, um, or Canico itself. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think that that largely makes makes sense to me. So yeah, so that this sort of spectrum of things sort of jives with the way I've been thinking about the space. I think there's sort of a progression of, of trust and sort of at the least trusted side of it, it's like, okay, um, this, this step in the build pipeline may end up uh, executing 
relatively arbitrary stuff based on the inputs. And so you want it to have sort of the, the big, you know, the, the toughest sandbox in terms of hermeticity and blah, 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 right? But um, you, you invariably may need to do things that like fetch external dependencies that aren't necessarily going through, um, uh, you know, you're, uh, if we're talking about the context of Kubernetes, you know, those kinds of traditional admission control. And so there, there may be a level of trust in those things. So, you know, for instance, here would be, um, if I were executing um, a Conoco task, um, I may want to do that hermetically because that may be executing, you know, uh, it, well, it has the potential to do things like fetch packages over the network and do other forms of sort of arbitrary code execution, but it needs to do things like fetch images, right? So maybe the Conoco warmer, which is much more constrained, can execute outside of the hermetic sandbox. It, it, it is one of the more trusted things because it doesn't do arbitrary code execution. Um, and you can sort of reason about, so you can sort of partition the roles and responsibilities, as, as uh, my friend Vile would say, um, across sort of more trusted things and less trusted things. And the less trusted things run in stricter, under stricter controls. Um, uh, you know, to do some of the more arbitrary uh, code execution work. Does that sort of make sense? <laughs> yep. Yep. No, that, that definitely, and I think that uh, falls in line with some of the other elements of, for example, the build itself, where we do call out stuff like a... Um, Things that can do arbitrary builds really need to be monitored. Um, you know, you really need to sort of limit the capabilities, privileges, et cetera, that it has to purely what it needs. Compare that to, let's say, something like a linter where you're like, okay, well, I know the linter should only be doing these sets of things. We can easily detect that they're doing something that is outside the scope of that thing compared to, you know, a build, you know, or, or a compilation step where you're like, you know, if anybody's ever run um, eBPF traces against a build, it's like, I have no idea what's going on in there. Like there's like all sorts of file opens and writes and, and you know, it's writing to memory here and yeah, yeah, like it, that can be significantly more difficult. Um, so I, I totally, I'm on board with that. And, you know, I think we call out a couple of times in the build steps, like, for example, if your build does not need to write anything, right? It's purely reading. Do not give it write access to anything. Um, and I think that that sort of thing uh, makes sense. And I think with some of the stuff that that's kind of coming down the pipe with, you know, um, including stuff as OCI objects and whatever, we'll kind of get a better, um, get a better, better understanding of some of those things. I also want to point out one thing where if I think we are we are making we were talking about some assumptions of the things that are running inside that um you know within the the reference frame of this reference architecture we are treating those as inputs. So um I think we wanna we, we need to be able to establish, you know, what 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 the different categories and you know put more, more into defining that before I think we create this complicated relationship with um, the, the policy and the emission control side. So it sounds like the task verification, I think is pretty straightforward for emission control. Uh, the infrastructure itself, um, is that something that can be done today or that's kind of like a bottom to the problem? Sorry, is, is what something that can be done today? Um, verifying the infrastructure that is being run. There's so many layers of infrastructure. Is it the cluster, Kubernetes cluster, which is running? Uh, the, the, the Tecton, sorry. The Tecton. Um, the Tecton. I, so, like 
I mean, yeah, take, yeah, yeah, take, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Matt. So, I, I mean, there's many layers, right? Like there's verification at the node image up through to the, the cluster execution layer and then the stuff running inside those things, right? So right. thinking thinking about it in terms of sort of what, um, you know, Tecton instructs uh, Kubernetes to execute, Tecton doesn't necessarily do anything with respect to verification there, but since it's executing things in terms of pods, you can use something like, uh, you know, um, Cosign signatures and you know one of the policy enforcement agents like OPA Gatekeeper, or, uh, the Caverno stuff, or even the um, cosigned webhook to verify that the images going into that pod spec are verified. And so that would that would um, basically verify the Tecton sort of system images as well as the images that um, you know are, are the steps that execute as part of that workflow uh, right. itself. Yeah, um, and so. So yeah, you you could do it. I mean, Tecton isn't signing its images as far as I know yet today. Um, uh, at no, least they, the they are. Pipelines. Tech, uh, pipelines is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That uh, awesome. I, yeah, I, I validate I, I validate my own uh, Tecton uh, images against to ensure that they are uh, signed by Tecton. Uh, oh, Tecton's awesome. Key. Today yep. I learned. So, so it sounds like it sounds like you know verifying the different um, verifying the different things with this infrastructure, the the task itself they're running, and then the artifacts seem like logically different components. Uh, are you talking about? Uh, sorry, um, let me just. You're talking about verifying the output. Uh, verifying the output and then verifying the task. Uh, are these like yeah. two different? Okay. Yeah, so I think those are two separate things. Um, I think that they're related, right? You could use the admission controller to do, in most cases, both of those things, and they probably don't require significantly different configuration to sort of do that. But I know, like, one thing to sort of keep it, one of the reasons why to keep it somewhat different is a lot of folks are going to keep uh, their... Um, um, uh, uh, Oh, so um, some of the stuff uh, uh, is like, for example, um, what was I going to say? Blanked for a second there. Uh, oh, um, the reason to keep it conceptually different is some folks like financial services are often thinking like, no, 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 we secure, you know, our secure software factory is going to be its own control plane. It is not going to have anything to do with production. And so we're going to have a separate um, admission controller for that cluster. Um, you know, and, and those sorts of things. So I think that's one reason to keep it conceptually different, but the configuration should probably look similar. Okay, so I, I'm I'm kind of um, skirting around the idea of should we split this component into two different components, two or three different components, and then talk about it separately. Well, and, and sort of from what layer up, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, like I said, there's there's sort of the node layer, there's, there's the cluster orchestration layer, and then even within that, right, like Tecton tasks can go out and fetch dependencies, like I was talking about with, you know, Conico and whatnot. So like, unless you're doing things hermetically, um, you know, they can, they can go out and fetch sort of non-containery things. And so there's also a form of admission control there. So you've got the VM image, you've got container images, you've got, um, you know, potentially language level things, um, you know, being fetched from the tasks themselves. So it would be good to scope this. Yeah. And at some point, we're going to stop depleting, right? As, as Jack Ray says, you know, you can sign the NAND gates. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I'm just reading the chat here. So I think we've got some good input on this. And do we think that maybe let's split this up or try and exercise of splitting these two, this component up into two, two or three different things. And and then we can like having 
pipeline verifier or pipeline emission control, um, artifacts verifier such emission control. How does that sound to, to folks? Yeah, I think it makes sense to break it up to, to basically different uh, scope. So each admission control we can discuss in, in a different scope. Okay. So let's try and split it up right now. So what do we want to call? Let's say we have um, what do we want to call these? If first can be pipeline admission controller, then dependency, like all the dependencies will verify uh, then like base images and everything that comes under that. Uh, so is there also a build the build machine or control plane uh, admission controller, like the block and things that are happening there, and then also the runtime admission controller, right? Like so meaning if something's happening at runtime, that's I don't know like some metadata comes in and somebody drops something in, then, you know, it would stop it as well. Am I overthinking it, you all? I think that falls under the built system admission controller. Um, okay. I mean, at, at some point also, I think we, we also want to say that, you know, at a certain level, this is like, puts into the hardening category. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so should should we think about it? Um, I'm wondering, sorry, if this, since we finally got names out, I'm just sort of marinating on this, right? So should we think about it in terms of the actors involved in being like uh, regulated, right? So, you know, I talked about sort of arbitrary developer code being sort of sandboxed a particular way, right? So how do we sort of admission control those things? And then there's sort of, you know, the, the um, sort of, more systemsy thing, but not like the the root level systemsy things, like you know the tasks that are running as part of the build pipeline, um, which you know may, maybe the ops folks um, are you know configuring particular tasks or pipelines for execution, right? And then you know there's um, even higher level bits, you know, around like what you were consuming, maybe provided by a cloud vendor or something like that, um, and the guarantees you want around on those kinds of things, right? So, yeah. you know, different actors in the various categories with different constraints around them, maybe different levels of trust, um, different, you know, change cycles, et cetera. I don't know. I, I think some of the points you brought up, um, initially we were, um, initially when we were scoping it, we were like, okay, you know, we just won't assume anything about what's, what's given to us to run. Um, we're gonna, cover that in a separate section. And therefore we, you know, we came out with these um these caveats here where, you know, maybe you want to do compute sandboxing, uh, maybe you want to do provenance for the tasks in themselves and things like that. Um so I think I think that goes to the point of like I don't think within the reference architecture we've defined like what these things look like. Um or correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like we would have to define a little bit more what the things, the properties of the, the inputs being, because we take um, the task as an input. Um, we probably have to go into more details of, you know, what are the parameters of the task. And I think this, this is again a scoping question, right? I think we just have to be in kind of, I don't want to use the term violent, but vehement agreement on what like our scope is for this. Cause we can literally boil the ocean. I think we talk about this pretty much every week on what we need to do. We just kind of have a line in the sand in terms of what we're going to do here from an admission controller perspective. Like what is, what does a V1 look like? Is it like, you know, like, if we have to attack each one of these admission controllers, at least at a, at a, at a like a primary level, then 
so be it, right? I mean, Mike, Michael, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, um, each of those things is probably going to be two or three bullet points for each, right? And, you know, and that's it, right? Like at this point, and you know, we might have a high level like, hey, your admission controller should be looking at these sorts of things, right. and then the three specific ones should be just looking at the, you know, these sorts of bullet points, right? You know, and and where you know the admission controller can't do something today. Here is an example of a mitigating control around that. And, you know, but but I wouldn't want it to be like, you know, because obviously if we get deep into the weeds there of, you know, um, outside of stuff like check for signatures and check for these sorts of things, we could we could go real, real deep where the policy is like, you know, here are the sorts of like common build parameters that are maybe suspicious and we, we can go that route and, and I, we'd be here uh, till the end of time. But um, I think for now, yeah, like just just a couple of high level sorts of things to give people. Um, and, and then also, if a tool comes out down the line, V2 of this, somebody can go ahead and, and add as much data as possible. That's the whole point of this is just to put a line in the sand so folks can have that, you know, primary reference architecture that they can iterate on. So, yeah, I kind of agree on the bullets there and also the overview. Yeah, I, 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 I'm tempted to say that let's let's take an exercise where each person picks one, put everything that that you think you know, um, basically the entire kitchen sink, and then we'll come together, reevaluate and determine okay, you know what are things which are um, good to mention by our scope, uh, what are things that are doable within the reference architecture. But I think we. There's a lot of good information that's going around, but we so we want to capture that and at least have it, whether it's gonna end up being part of the V1 reference architecture or it goes into like the caveats here, some recommendations that are not necessarily in scope of, of the reference architecture. I think we should at least capture the information. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I agree with um with you, Matt. It's kind of like an overloaded term. Um, so can I can I can we split this up? Maybe one person takes one and just like brain dump what do you think are the responsibilities, what they should do, and then you know this is something that we can revisit. Yep, yeah, sounds good. Um, shall we? Who wants to volunteer for for? for you can take more than one. No, I'm not stopping. <laughs> I'm not stopping anyone. Uh, but it sounds like it, it sounds like this. There has been a lot of discussion, and people are are opinionated on this topic. So I want to let folks put in all the content that they want. Yeah, and and also once again, feel free to to put stuff. We can maybe even um. You know, this is where maybe I don't want to say have um, the all the discussion in a thread inside the supply chain working group, but even just like I'm also willing to kind of have some discussions with some folks, other highly opinionated folks um, off, you know, outside of the scope of this meeting, if, if we wanted to keep going, because I just, you know, yeah. you know, we have other things. Yeah, I, I'm I'm happy to uh, help here. I'm, I guess part of my hesitation is I'm sort of. <laughs> struggling to figure out how I, I would articulate this. So uh, putting it into words seems like a leap, but uh, I guess I can uh, sign up and, and deal with that. And I'm happy to chat with other folks if uh, they want to. Um, you got the gift for Gab, double okay. M. You can handle this. <laughs> yeah, but then we'll have a, a 300 page doc. I mean, just talking. <laughs> about. I'm happy to help that. But... Oh. Yeah, um, I know I see a lot of chat within the 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 Zoom chat, so I'm not gonna well I can't tag anyone. So, but you know, don't hesitate to put in put in your comments here and what your thoughts are. Okay. 
I think we have a fairly acceptable um, action item for emission controllers. Um, I think other than that, um, the only thing that it seems we didn't really talk about in this document um, is the metadata chains. Um, yeah, that's a uh, that's a good one. That's a, that's another BD one that probably needs its own okay. hour. Let's. Um, well, if someone so yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Michael. Yeah, the the I think um. I'm down to have uh, also another conversation with all the folks who might be interested in that. I know a lot of folks have very strong opinions on a lot of this, but I know one of our um, unique, one of the challenges I think a lot of us are running into is the challenge of like, okay, we have a metadata chain. How much of that metadata chain should be specified in some sort of layout like in Toto or whatever beforehand? How much should be generated by the build itself, how much should be auto-generated. There's a lot of big uh, questions there that I think um, we'll, we'll need to have a, a, a pretty big discussion on as as well. And and we might to to go to um, you know to to parrot pop a lot. Uh, like we we might have to you know say hey look this is the the generic opinion we're keeping right now. As time goes on, we might have a more, you know, a, 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 a more, we might be more opinionated in the future, but this is what we're saying right now. All right. And also it grounds us in other people providing collaboration down the line. We can say if, okay, this is what, what we think. Eventually, if you want to kind of, you know, add your two cents then go ahead, you know, do the work that we, we had to do here to put this thing together. So you mentioned that there's a lot of opinionated people about chains, so. Can we get some of those opinion people to fill out something so that at least you can have something uh, for discussion the next time? It's, it's, I think it's easier to have a discussion around something rather than trying to define it from the ground up. Whether how accurate that, whether the definition would be, you know, doesn't matter. <laughs> it's about having something to talk about. Yep. Um, and who, so who, who do you think is, um, I think there's a couple folks also on the call that also involved in Dodo as well. So, um, I don't want to volunteer tell anybody, but, um, I would love to have both chains and in Toto folks, um, put, put their opinions, um, in there. Uh, I know that just yesterday, you know, internally we had a two hour discussion about uh, this very problem. And um, we still have a lot of open open questions about it. So it sounds like um, uh, reach out to Marina and Jason. Yeah, we have happy to help with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. It's just, I don't know how this tagging thing works, um, so. Cool. Uh, if not, I think we're out of time, but this was very productive. I think there's a lot of good information and, you know, we all learn new things today. So, uh, cool. Yeah, so next week we'll have, um, Michael will do a quick demo uh, on the, the reference architecture, um, well, an implementation of an architecture that he done at um, City and, um, Jack was sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong all the time. Um, please put that if if you feel comfortable with uh shattered graph and the uh, the channel. If not, we can spend maybe five ten minutes next time if you want to just talk through talk through the stuff that you've been writing. Yeah. Well, I've I've already realized there's things I need to rewrite after this conversation, so you're all stuffed. Well, everything's a working document, right? So. <laughs> and uh, if you're wondering, it's Jacques. It rhymes with Jacques. Jacques, okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. If not, I guess we'll see everyone next week.
Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.